Hello. We're with a, a wonderful veteran that I've gotten to know over the years. So Nancy, please tell us your full name. Hello. Thanks for asking me to be here today. I'm Nancy Von Der Ossick. And, and, what, and what years did you serve? What service? What did you retire as? I, I started pretty early. Um, I came in delayed enlistment and that was in 1978. Mm -hmm. And I spent between uh, the active duty and National Guard 34 years. 34 in the years? Military. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, primer, Air Force? Air Force, yes. Yeah. All, and what, and what did you retire Force. as? I retired as a chief. That's wonderful. Very fortunate. So for those who don't know, uh, Chief Master Sergeants make up 1% of the enlisted force right. by law. They can't have more than 1%. Right. Senior Master Sergeants, that's 2%. So between the two, it's a 3% of our force. Right. I've been honored to serve with so many great chiefs over my 30 years in the Air years. Force. And I, so chiefs made some great difference in my life as an early commander and even I remember as a captain and major. So all along my life, uh, there's chiefs that I served with and I, I remember uh, so well. Me as well. Me as well. So when you came in in 1978, the morale of the military was known as, as the highest post-Vietnam era. So tell us a little bit about what it was like in 1978 in the military. Well, I came in in 1978. We went to basic training in San Antonio, Texas um, in July. And um, it was kind of rough. There were... Um, there were a lot of incidents going on and the morale wasn't all that great. Um, I came into the military so that I could get an education and get some travel in. And boy, mm -hmm. has that uh, paid off. Wow. Has paid off, yeah. It was known as the hollow force years after Vietnam. It really took uh, the Reagan era. Yeah. And, you know, to be to honest, a Democratic Senate, but uh, and a, well, it was actually, actually a House Senate, a Democrat House, a Democrat House and Republican Senate, but the, it was a bipartisan deal to raise the military spending. Right. And I think we were that able to, in, to get the military healthy again after the late 70s. So, yes. so what was your specialty? I was always in the medical field, and I started out um, as an x-ray tech, and that's kind of a long school. So you spend about mm -hmm. a, your first year and a half after basic training going through their school, and that was also in Texas. Um, and I was an x-ray tech for years for the military. Worked right. in many hospitals around the world. So during your time, we had Grenada, we had Panama, yes. we had the Balkans, we had a, the early invasion of Iraq, or the early Iraq, uh, you know, from 1991. Right. Then of course we had Afghanistan and Iraq uh, with the war on terror. The um, Iran hostage yes. that I was privileged to be able to take care of some of those hostages when they came. Wow. When they finally got them out of there. That was 1979. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It was 1979. We had over a year of these hostages, and they got it was released. 444 days. Yeah. My math is correct. I think it is. And um, we were. My unit was actually in Germany, and they took a lot of those hostages and then brought them over to the hospital. It was a privilege to take care of mm -hmm. those people that had been through so much, so much. It was incredible. A lot of people don't realize that our hostages that were worked in the embassy, the Iranians in 1979 faked like they were going to shoot them yes, multiple times. They absolutely. went through drills as if they were being executed, but then right. they were not. It was a form of torture. Right. And uh, the, so these people were tough. And, and, and they were um, senior people that were at the embassy down mm -hmm. to the junior folks that yeah. were just working behind a desk somewhere. So it was. Mm -hmm. It would have been uh, quite an experience for them. So with all those various contingencies, if I understand right, the one that you most were involved with were the Balkans. Yes. Can you, can you tell us your experience? Well, um, yes, I was deployed for parts of that. I was the first sergeant, so mm -hmm. um, I was responsible for taking care of things with our people. And there's always something going on with our people. We were mm -hmm. in parts of France, and we were flying lots of missions, and it was it, it got to be kind of hairy once mm -hmm. in a while. Um, but we had some great airmen, some great airmen, yeah. some some great pilots. I, I was honored to be able to work with people mm -hmm. that are that high caliber. Um, some things didn't go so well, you yeah. know. People are people, and you got to send somebody home when you get a call. Something's going on back home, but overall. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a good deployment. We learned a lot. We we saw a lot. We learned a lot from right. our you know allies in the in those regions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we love our first sergeants too. <laughs> Don't 
a great job. It's a great job. So I was a two-time squadron commander. Oh, okay. And first sergeant's and squadron commanders. That's where the action's at. That's right? exactly right. And so my uh, one of my squadron commanders uh, got fired, oh. and I got told, "Hey, you're replacing them." And so I we had a change com or not a change command. I had an assumption of command, and then my first sergeant says, uh, hey, uh, "Lieutenant Colonel Bacon, we have to kick so and so out of the Air Force today." And I'm like, "Great." Can you take? Uh, how does this work? How do we do it? So I had to be yeah. sort of taught right. by the first sergeant. Said you know this first sergeants sort of teach the young commanders what's going on. Yep. And so it's a it's, it's a, a good lot, partnership. Yeah, they, the, those first sergeants have been in that regulation field, yeah. and they have right. been and they've been deployed, and they've worked with all kinds of different people. So yeah. the experience level that they have is remarkable. Yeah. So there's no, I can't say that there was anything that was ever thrown at me as a first sergeant where I had to sit back and mm -hmm. go, "Wow, what do we do about that?" But, so I, I had a, it was, I had a great military career. Yeah. I, I can honestly say that, even though it wasn't all great, mm -hmm. but it was very rewarding. So how, how long again did you serve? Uh, thirty four years. Thirty four years. Thirty four years. That's very uncommon as well. On this Veterans Day, uh, what is your, how do you reflect on your thirty four years of service? Um, that is a, that is a great question. I think a lot about the people that I had interactions with that are no longer here. Mm -hmm. I think about them a lot, um, not, and not just on Veterans Day mm -hmm. either. So I think about those people and what they would have wanted me to do and mm -hmm. carry forward, and as even as a retiree now, um, what they would want me to mm -hmm. see, say and see, um, and I. It, it, it humbles me to uh, right. to remember all those people, and uh, mm -hmm. I I try and uh, be I'm involved with the Veterans Administration and help there as a kind of a volunteer for as mm -hmm. a Veterans Administrator for the I'm a fiduciary for some right. veterans, so um, that's kind of part of my giving back yeah. and helping and giving back. But do you have someone during your career that stands out as to you as? A superior leader or a leader that inspires you? You know, there were so many people that I remember um, that taught me a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Taught me a lot of things about leadership, um, about sticking with it even when things were, were going bad. Um, but I have a female um, colonel uh, she's still in the National Guard. Do you want names? Or? No, it's all right. You can just, <laughs> okay. talk, just describe and, what makes this person and, so and, special. And she was um, Nothing ever really shook her. I mm -hmm. mean, the the doo doo could be hitting the fan, the inspections, the deployments. Mm -hmm. It could be going around her 100 miles an hour. She was calm, cool, and collected. She mm -hmm. would had the knack for asking the right questions and getting good answers and mm -hmm. carrying on. I, oh, I love it. Yeah, she was she was pretty impressive. Among many, I mean, I had I had some great leaders, and I, 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 I had another general that was. Um, was a great was a great leader for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thirty four years is a tremendous long time. It Thank is. you. It went by like that. And again, as someone who commanded five times, I think of and, and, and I came up through the ranks. I feel that I had just as much mentorship given to me by senior NCOs at every step of the way. Well, and even as a lieutenant colonel, colonel and general, yeah, there was some mentorship, but the partnership and running units. And I know that I became much better because of the great chiefs, senior NCOs that I worked with it's, that helped it, us yeah. that so helped us deliver victory. It's a relationship like none other that mm -hmm. I have found in the civilian world at all. None like yeah. that. Yeah. I, I remember one of my first sergeants came in and gave me some advice one day when I was really busy, five things going on. <laughs> and I appreciated, you know what, that I think it takes courage to say, sir, I, I, I hear what you're trying to do. Can I give you some thoughts? Maybe you could do this. <laughs> and you got to think about it and go, you know what? You're right. <laughs> you I appreciate go. that. That kind of interaction and right. relationship. And makes your a willingness to listen yeah. to input from other people, um, I'm mm -hmm. sure, has helped you along the way. I'll give you another one. I When I was a one star at off, uh, the command chief there was, her name was Chief Sangster. And she uh, came in, she goes, there's a young, Senior, senior master sergeant is going to make chief way early. I have a plan to get him 
early above and in a spot, I'd like to just take, you know, trust me, this guy is a superstar. And if we could get him in this job early, he'll be three or four years early. He's already young. And today he is the, uh, the command chief for spa the space service. Ah, that's great. Yeah. And her advice and me listening to it, uh, help get this guy that's now the top enlisted person for space where he's at today. And, wow. and to me, it's, you know, I could take a little credit, but in the end, it was that chief come up to me saying, I, there's a superstar over here that we can push along and That's, really put him a good spot down the road. This years of watching those airmen yeah. develop from, you know, they come in there wide-eyed until they start getting mm -hmm. some experience and they start learning how the military yeah. works. Oh, yeah, that's years of experience of watching that. Well, Chief, we thank you. I am honored to be here and be in the military. And we have a, have a great Veterans Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. as You too.